Shane asked Steel Image here. Strength is a cornerstone property of steel. Whether it's a building, plane, train, crane, that steel component has to be strong enough to survive the years and years and years of service without issue. Yet, make no mistake, strength is not the only property we need to consider when describing the robustness of steel or component made of steel. No one wants to have a strong but brittle steel because that would be very dangerous to work with and to build with. So today I wanted to discuss the property that we use to describe steel's ability to absorb energy, shock loading, impact loading, a property that we call toughness. Toughness is very different than steel. And in this talk, I wanna discuss strength and toughness together. I wanna to discuss how they're different, how they're both important, and some general trends that everyone should be aware of. For that, I'm gonna use three different types of steel, low carbon, medium carbon, and low alloy steel and compare strength versus toughness. But first, let's use the test methods that we use to measure strength and toughness to describe their differences. We determine the strength of steel by cutting samples and machining samples from the steel we're interested in, putting it into a tensile tester, and slowly pulling it apart, measuring the resistance the steel puts up to being pulled apart. The, the stronger the steel, the more it resists being, being ripped into two pieces. Now, tensile testing is very slow. And even though I, I've accelerated here at 10 times, the second half of a test, you're gonna notice it's a very, very slow test. And that's the point I wanna make. All the mill certs, all the tensile data that you ever see is pulled apart, not at this rate, at 10 times slower than this rate. How many components do you know of that get loaded only that slowly or phrased differently? How many components can you think of that get loaded much, much, much faster than that? Your car suspension uh, on a dirt road or hitting a pothole, a, an aircraft landing gear as it touches down, a ship at sea as it breaks over a wave and hits the next wave. Many components require the ability to sustain impact shock loading, what we call high strain rate loading. So most steel components require toughness. How we measure toughness, the most common test in the industry is called Sharpie impact testing. Sharpie impact specimens are machined with two millimeter notches and then impacted with a Sharpie impact test. Let's watch that again from a different angle. And notice the difference in the loading rate compared to the slow tensile testing. What we're measuring is the amount of energy the steel absorbs before it's ripped apart. The higher the absorbed energy, the more durable the steel is under impact conditions like this. Clearly, toughness is very important for the durability of steel components, especially those that experience very rough service conditions or they're safety critical. Now, interesting, not a lot of components have toughness criteria where everything designed is going to have a strength criteria. All steel bought and sold has been tested for its tensile strength. Very few components and very few steel bought and sold have toughness requirements. Now, it's not that anyone's being negligent. It's that the, design, the designers know when steel is at risk of having poor toughness. Or phrased differently, if you're designing or manufacturing things, you need to know when low toughness can be, can be a risk and how to mitigate it, what to do about it. To talk about the common trends that we should be aware of when we're designing, we're going to plot the tensile strength, in this case, the yield strength, against the toughness. So if you look on the bottom side, Axis there, you'll see that as we get further to the right, we're increasing the yield strength. And on the left-hand side, we're, we're going to be plotting against toughness or the absorbed energy from Sharpie impact testing. The first steel I want to talk about is a low-carbon steel that I've picked here. It's a, it's a 1015, which means it has about 10.15% uh, carbon. And when we, when, we, when we plot the strength versus toughness of this particular batch, we find that the in the hot roll condition or normalized condition, it has relatively good toughness. Now, if you were to buy steel from 10 different mills, you would expect a lot of scatter. But for the most part, we expect low carbon steel to have relatively good toughness. Uh, and it's actually one of the reasons why we don't really bother or we don't often testing the toughness of low carbon steel because we can just assume it's pretty good. Now, there's going to be applications that we use at very cold temperatures or safety critical, uh, or in refinery, sometimes we will we will choose to do it just to be extra safe. But for the most part, low carbon steel is not is not Sharpie impact tested, or doesn't have toughness criteria 
because we assume it's pretty good. And that's why pretty much everything on your car uh, has no toughness criteria, nor has it been tested, nor, nor can you really easily test Sharpie impact test steel of that size. The second type of steel I want to bring in here is a medium carbon steel. So this is the 1045 and it has 0.45% carbon. Now, one of the things that we need to know about, about, about steel is that carbon, although it increases the strength of steel, it generally decreases the toughness of steel. As we compare the hot roll to normalized condition of this 1045, which oddly doesn't have that much more strength, but usually has a bit more strength increase, you can see that we have a much, much, much lower toughness. Now, this is about as low a toughness as, as you probably want to go. Every different application is going to have a minimum toughness criteria, but generally between 13, 15, or 20 foot-pounds absorbed energy, it's kind of about as low as you want to go in pretty much every application. If we were to take that 1045 steel and we were to water quench it, heat it up to red-hot temperatures and water quench it, without tempering, that steel it might have might appear to have very high strength, but it's actually quite brittle. In this case here, it absorbed a meager three foot pounds before it fractured. And, and this is the scenario I was mentioning earlier is that we don't wanna have high strength steel that's very brittle because all it takes is a notch and an impact and, and we could have our, our component could shatter and that's not very safe. And we generally avoid as quenched, no temper steel because of that. If we temper it, we're going to restore some toughness to it. it. Depending the temperature temperature that we use, you can see here on the right-hand side, the highest strength has been tempered at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. But as we go to higher and higher and higher temperatures, we, we do decrease the strength of steel, but we get the benefit of toughness. And what this lets us do is it lets us design in for whatever strength, you know, whatever strength we might need, we can design in the tempering, the tempering temperature to give us the toughness that we want. And we can balance those two properties back and forth between each other, depending what our needs are for a specific application. Now there is benefit to adding other alloys. So we've talked about how if you add more carbon, that's actually bad for the toughness, right? It gives you, it gives you more strength, but is 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 bad for your for your toughness. But there's other alloys such as nickel, molybdenum, chromium that as we add those, we actually get the benefit of both a strength increase and a, and a toughness increase. And for that, I'm going to use a low alloy steel called 4140. It has, it has about 0.4% carbon, so very similar to the medium carbon steel we just explained. But it also has a little bit of molybdenum, 0.2%, and 1% chromium. And as you look here, you can see that you're getting, you're getting higher strength, but you can see that the green dots show that you're also getting, getting higher toughness. I'd like to break that down a little bit. When we compare the low alloy steel, the 4140, in the hot roll to normalized condition, you can see here that we're, we're stronger than both your low carbon and your medium carbon steel. And we're also, we also seem to have a little bit more toughness. And that's a general trend is that, that, that you know, your, your molybdenum, chromium, and if you had nickel, they tend to increase the toughness of the steel as well. If you were to take that 4140 and you were to bring it up to red hot temperatures and, and quench it, it's going to be brittle. Whether it's 1045, it's 4140, it's another alloying, uh, it quenched steel, as quenched steel is quite is quite brittle, it has poor toughness, and it's generally unsafe. We we typically avoid it for its poor toughness. Well, we do commonly use 4140 in the quench temperature. In fact, it's the it's the number one condition we use it at. And as we as we use different tempering temperatures, you can see here compared to the 4140, is that we're getting both an, an increase in strength and an increase in toughness because of that alloy. So if you need a steel that has both high strength and good toughness, you might you might choose to pay extra for that 4140. Now, if we take a step back, we've covered a lot of data here. And it's pretty amazing to see that between adjusting the alloying and the heat treatment, we can get a wide range of strength. We can get a wide range of toughness. But you might start to notice that there, there's kind of this general trend. And the general trend is that as we increase the strength of the steel, we generally get lower toughness. And, and that means we often have to choose. What, you know, what, what toughness do we require 
And once we know what that toughness is, we can then play around with what strength and what we can afford as far as additional alloy to go with it. The other trend that I would re be remiss not to talk about is temperature. All the data that I've shown here today was taken at room temperature. So, you know, you're 75 degrees Fahrenheit or, you know, you're 22, 24 degrees Celsius. But everyone probably intuitively knows as steel gets colder, it tends to behave in a more brittle manner. It has lower toughness. So if we if we look at our low carbon steel again, tested at room temperature, comfortable to sit in, if we were to de decrease the temperature, we would expect and we would get low, lower toughness properties. The exact same steel tested at minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 29 degrees Celsius, we're going to get much lower, much more lower toughness. And, and this is really important to be aware of when you're designing or buying steel. If your equipment is designed to operate in cold environments, your, your toughness criteria might be at that minimum temperature or the coldest temperature that you design the equipment to survive in. And when you buy the steel, you might be buying steel tested to that cold temperature just to make sure you have the toughness and robustness for, for what you've designed your equipment to be in. In rapid fire summary of the things we've talked about, I'm going to do this in 10 points. Strength is represents the durability of steel under slow or mo moderate loading rates. Toughness represents the steel and its robustness under high strain rate loading, our impact, our shock loading. The two are very different, and generally they're opposite to each other. As steel gets stronger, it tends to have lower toughness, and we often have to choose uh, or, or balance the properties that, that we want. Low carbon steel generally has good toughness. Anything used in extreme cold temperatures or extreme conditions or very high risk like our, like our freighters filled, our tankers filled with oil, you might have to have toughness criteria no matter what. But a lot of industries have, have chosen to use low carbon steel and not worry about toughness because it generally has good enough toughness. As we increase the carbon, our toughness decreases. And we showed that by going to a common medium carbon steel. It has a fraction of the toughness of our, of our low carbon steel. We can inch the toughness back up by adding a little bit of molybdenum, chromium, and nickel. And that makes it both stronger and gives us better toughness. Heat treatment matters. Our hot rolled and normalized steels, they tend to have moderate toughness for the alloying that we have. If we take a hardenable steel and we quench it, it's brittle, it's dangerous. And unless you really know what you're doing, please do not use steel in the as quenched condition. But if we temper it, we can tailor both the toughness and the strength together to give us the properties that we want. A low tempering temperature will give us maximum strength but it will do so at the sacrifice of toughness. It will not, it'll have low toughness. And it's, as we increase the temporary temperature, we're going to get better and better and better toughness at the sacrifice of strength. And lastly, temperature. We all know steel decreases in toughness as we get colder. Beware if you are designing equipment to be using cold temperature, make sure your design criteria uh, and the steel that you buy is suitable for that temperature that you want to use. There is a neat and useful trick when dealing with steel with low toughness. And in my next video, I'm going to explore that. But in the meantime, if you've liked this video, please like, please share, tell all your friends and follow along for the next video. Because the more you know about the materials you work with, the better you'll be at what you do.